In today's video, I'm delighted to share with you a first look at a beautiful new website that has recently launched. It's devoted to a designer who I'm sure will be familiar to collectors of vintage penguin books, Romic Marber. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Romic Marber was born in 1925 and passed away in 2020. He is considered one of the most influential figures in late 20th century British graphic design. This website certainly continues that tradition with a stylish visualization of every aspect of Romick's work. Viewers of this channel will, I'm sure, be most interested in the work that he did for Penguin Books. Starting in 1961, Romick was invited by Penguin to design two trial covers for Pelican. These were a couple of new editions of Simeon Potter's Language in the Modern World and Our Language. Around this time, Penguin founder Alan Lane had started to relinquish parts of the business and had brought in Tony Godwin as an editor, but also to start modernising the list. Godwin in turn recruited a new art director, designer Germano Facitti, himself a concentration camp survivor like Romick, to start overhauling the look of the Penguin list. After spotting some covers he did for The Economist, Facitti asked Romick to redesign the iconic Penguin crime series. The creation of the Marburg Grid was born, a distinct style which was instantly recognisable and very much of its time. Within a short while it started to be used as a blueprint for other Penguin series. Romick himself contributed about 100 of his own covers to the crime imprint. Authors who were treated to original jackets included Ellery Queen, Josephine Tay, John Le Carre, Earl Stanley Gardner, and a host of Simonon's Maigret titles. He also made contributions to Pelicans and the newly formed Peregrine books. The website has everything beautifully reproduced and you can really appreciate and admire just how good these designs really are. Other highlights are the superb promotional posters and retail point of sale that Romick designed. Definitely museum quality archive material. There are shop display bins, posters, booklets, bookmarks and even a sticker. Enough to make a collector drool. Just look at the condition of those books. I've never seen these before. But this is just the books. Romick produced so much more throughout his career. Magazine covers, film posters and advertising. There is a particularly great section of exhibitions of Romick's work. There's also a link so you can read, in its entirety, Romick's out-of-print autobiography, No Return, Journeys in the Holocaust. There's also a comprehensive bibliography where you can find further information. There have been many books and magazine articles published on Romick's work, several by the Penguin Collector Society, which I believe are all still in print. I'll let the images speak for themselves, but I encourage you to investigate yourself. There's a lot to see here, and I'm certain you'll enjoy what you find. My thanks to Orner from John and Orner Designs for permission to feature the website in this video. All material is used with permission. <laughs>